Introduction to History and Government Luanda is walking a different way home today from his school. Although it is a longer and secluded route, the day is so nice and it is worth it. Luanda sees figures digging in the dirt and he goes to investigate. Let's see what is up. Habarigani, what are you doing way out here digging in the dirt? There is no treasure I can promise you. Missouri. And Gina Longu Dr. Anderson. Asante for the tip. No, no. My crew and I are out here looking for a certain type of treasure. History. History? Yes. History is the study of man's past and how it relates to us today. It is something we can learn from as we have records with different accounts detailing the what, who, when, where, and how it happened. Also, who are you? I am Luanda. I live around here. I thought history was just my mze telling me stories about times gone past. That is certainly a part of what history entails. Most oral traditions were the way that knowledge was passed in prehistory times. What do you mean prehistory? Like before history? That sounds confusing. In a sense, kind of. Prehistory studies before man learned how to record their actions. This is why we have to dig in the dirt looking for evidence, such as fossils or old tools. So, history is the study of more recent events, like the migration of the lower people. Yes, we have firm records showing that. That is an example of social history, specifically. Social being the study of culture like language, customs, and even how they dress. Yes, you're not as dumb as you look. Hey, be cool. Sorry, just teasing. The other ways you can look at history is through the political and economic lenses. Economics deals with how people earn their living, such as farming, industries, and trade. Political involves the government's, or lack of government's role in people's lives. Oh yeah, government, like our chief. We call him Sirikar. The chief does represent the local level of a government. In more general terms, government is the way of ruling, administering, and controlling groups of humans. There is a head system, in your case, the chief, that helps dictate what rules, laws, customs, and regulations are in place to help protect a certain group of people. This can range from the local county to a larger national scale. So the government is there to control how people act, and history is looking at how people acted in the past. That seems to be very closely tied. Absolutely. Government is a major part of history, and looking at it can explain how people lived in their time. So, where do you even get information on these subjects? You already mentioned one way, being stories from your mazé. That is the unwritten medium of history. Before writing and reading occurred, oral tradition was the main way to pass information. So, people had to listen to their mazé if they wanted knowledge. What a time to be alive. Oh, yes. But they had many different ways to spice up their stories, such as myths, proverbs, legends, songs, and even poetry. Oral tradition in Africa was very important, seeing as a writing system did not exist until much later. Uh, that seems like a difficult way to be fully accurate with the details. This is true. The stories could become embellished or altered as time passes, but it is a very important part of prehistory. It requires very little expertise or equipment and complements other sources of history. But what about all the different languages being spoken? How would oral tradition help if you can't even understand what's being said? Ah, that deals with the study of languages or linguistics. People needed a way to communicate when interacting and by looking at the development of languages that are similar can show how different groups split or came together. For example, Kiswahili is influenced by Arabic since the Arabs interacted in East Africa through trade. Hmm, that is cool to think about, but language kind of just happened. 
No one planned it. That is very true. Linguistics has the advantage of being easy to trace people's interactions and movements, as varying influences will be obvious. It is also a cheap way of studying a culture, since you just have to learn how to talk. But that takes a long time to master language. And time is money. Correct. Plus, you may lose words or even a whole language at times. It is possible for a language to go extinct. That is why we need to look at other aspects as well. Like a uh, person's specific origin, development, customs, and beliefs? <laughs> you know it. This is what I studied in university and it's called anthropology. We study how the present day people live and what past influences have made what they are today. This ranges from governments, religions, marriage beliefs, and economical forces such as farming and trade. Oh, so you basically live and study a group of people who they act differently around you. This is a great point and a disadvantage of our research. We have to live among the people, which is time consuming and may alter their behavior. But most of the time it is easy to get the info we need and helps us learn firsthand the past culture of a community. All right. If you are an anthropologist, why are you digging into that then? Anderson, come check this out. Excuse me for a moment. Don't go anywhere.